You're watching a simple, quick, basic worship tutorial. Welcome to Jim Madison and welcome to From the Depth. Building a ship is a great thing to start with, just because it's more simple. Anyways, let's get into it. What you want to do when you start the game is click Create. Then you get into this little creative world. Some random orientation is that F9 disables and enables your HUD. Using the tab key, I can switch to third person and just first person mood. When we start here, what we want to do is click escape and destroy all vehicles. Now we just delete everything and start clean. To begin building, you click B. If you click caps lock, you can hold the building in the air. If you click F3, you can switch to the normal kind of Space Engineer Minecraft type of build mood. If you click F3 again, you get to the From the Depth specific build mood. When you click B or click away from B, you get out of build mood. When we are at this block of building, we can select materials using E and go down to all these different menus. Now, forget everything you know about materials because From the Depth is a little bit different. You can see we have a wood block in the middle and we have metal blocks around it. This thing will float. Isn't that beautiful? With a lot of metal blocks and just a little wooden block in the middle, this actually kind of floats. Also, glass also floats. If you ever want to keep your ship straight and stuff, there is of course materials like lead and stuff. So you can have it in the bottom but then you'll really sink, because it's very heavy. You place blocks with left click, or sometimes remove them, depending on. And if you really fucked up, just hold Ctrl and click Z, and it will be undone. If you want to redo it again, click Ctrl Y. By clicking E, we get into this funny little build mood here. And here you can see the stats for all the materials. And you can see that, for example, lightweight alloy is actually a better floater than wood is. And wood is as good of a floater as glass. Now stone is a very nice material to work with, because it's as heavy as metal, but it's a lot cheaper. It also protects against EMP much better than metal, we'll get into that later. Now this will be a very basic tutorial, so if you don't mind, let's just get into it. We have something called reinforced decking, which is kind of fun, because it uh, floats very nicely. It's kind of mixed between metal and wood, and we will be using that as our material for the bottom of the ship. You can see inside this little metal thing here, when it's blue, you can't place it. When it is red, it means it will remove the block you're trying to place on. Oh no, we got out of build mode because we removed the last block. Just click that again. So anyways, you see that there is kind of a large arrow inside the ship. This is the direction of the vehicle. Keep that in mind. You don't want to build in the wrong direction. Now we have started this little thing here. And we can move around with the arrow keys when we're in this mood. If we hold tab, we can use our keys as displayed to switch around this block. When the block is green, it means you can place it. Now, what we also want to know is that if you click G, like in Gunnar, you can aim the block in the direction you are looking at. It's super handy. And if you click R, you can select the block that you are currently hovering over. Keep this in mind. Now, uh, note the orientation of your ship, like this, click N when you watch this direction. Now we have a nice little mirror, so let's make a little deck plate. Oh no. And please, remember you can Ctrl Z when you fuck up. Also note that the undo option is currently not available in multiplayer. Now we can just hold mouse button 1 and just spam blocks like that. 
and then we can hold mouse button 2 to place them towards us. So basically if you can place a block both mouse 1 and mouse 2 removes them or makes them sit there. It's just the direction if it, if it moves away from you or towards you. So you can get pretty efficient with building fast this way. Now I click F3 to move around a little quickly. Because this plate, while it's only half wood, will float super well. Now, of course, we want some kind of armor against the enemy. So what we will do is we will have a simple layer of metal around the ship. Only one single layer of wood will protect against basically nothing. Wood is cheap, but it's not a very good material. It's not even the best floater, but it looks cool. Now, believe it or not, but from the depth actually cares about how your ship is aerodynamical or hydrodynamical, I think it may be called also. So um, it can be a good idea to make your ships kind of pointy so that they won't be too slow, like this or something. Just a little bit is better than no nothing. Okay, scratch that part, but I wanna show you something here. Click E and then you see this little beam here. We have a one here, press that one and then we go to the beam slope down here, 4 meter, and we click the number 2. Now, these are in our hotkeys. Super nice. So we can switch between that one there, then we click 2. So we have this one into our hotkeys like that. 1. So we can be super efficient. And you can already see what type of shape we're going for here. Whoops, accidentally pressed caps lock, which freezes or unfreezes your ship, by the way. Um, I said that before. Anyways, we have a lot of specialized block and stuff like that. So if you want a very pointy top, you can use the wedges here. They're pretty nice to be kind of pointy and stuff. Now, um, we don't have anything in this ship that actually pumps out water. So um, it just floats by sheer wood floatiness. That's half this thing. Yes. However, there is a solution for that. But first, we need an engine. Now you can do a lot of cool stuff. You can go to the water column, get some sails and stuff like that. You can use the fuel engines, you can use the steam engines, you can use jet engines even if you, even if you make sure that they are actually not inside the water. And you can use electric engines. But what you need is basically something that generates something called engine power. And that engine power will power everything, like propellers and stuff like that. So we want this. But um, for all intents and purposes, um, fuel engines, just regular nice fuel engines, are more energy efficient. Uh, so just go with them to start with. They're like generally the best solution, always. Then we have something called generator. You see there is a little green blob at the front there. That's basically where the crankshafts connect. So here we have very nice. Now I want to build an engine in another weird direction just because we're going to build a specific engine. And then we use a crankshaft here. We are going to build an engine that's not very efficient um, or it is kind of efficient in terms of blocks but it's not very fuel efficient. Now you can see towards this crankshaft here, we connected four cylinders. Now you can play around with carburetors and superchargers and turbocharger and stuff like that, then it's super complex. Or you can just center yourself and just remove, click N till the little thing is removed, the little mirror plane. But we'll just play around with injectors here, that's why we removed it. You see it has kind of cup formed connections in the bottom here. So you want to aim them so that they are aiming towards the cylinder. We have two connections, which means we can use one injector per two cylinders. So now we basically have this engine kind of done. It uses kind of a, 
I think, uh, I don't know what it's called anymore. I think it's called Flower of Carnage, we call it. It's a nice song. Anyways, you can see here the fuel injectors are connected to the sides of the cylinder, linders as should be. But of course we need exhaust pipes. And you can use any of these. They are just exhaust pipes. Um, and uh, now this will probably not matter if we don't put the engine to its really highest limit but uh, injector engines can get kind of hot so we want to have uh, two exhaust pipes per cylinder just to make sure and as you can see uh, you can see where they can connect basically they can basically connect to all the sides the red stuff they can't connect to of course okay very nice now we have a little flower shaped here and we can even connect these pipes again to a single pipe um, and you'll see if, if it would get overheated, but we're just lazy, so we're gonna keep the pipes just straight up like that. But of course, um, we need to go to the resource tab because we don't have any fuel. Here under fuel, we need to select some fuel storage. We're just gonna have a large tank. Now fuel is pretty conservative, so uh, it usually don't get uh, burned away pretty quickly, so you can just, you know, you don't need loads of fuel, but it's always nice to have a little bit of backup fuel. So just spread out some other fuel storages in some other places. Now you might imagine that if you shoot your fuel, it will make a big kaboom. This is not true. It will not make a very big kaboom, just a little kaboom. So um, maybe you shouldn't build your AI on top of the fuel, but you don't need to be very careful about the fuel right now. However, what you need to be careful about is, of course, ammo storage, but we'll talk about that soon. Anyways, this engine takes kind of much fuel, um, but it's pretty powerful for the size. It's 800. It's also kind of cheap to build, which is very nice. So I usually go with injector uh, engines just because I'm lazy. Now, of course, when you hover over everything, you can see the cost of a specific block, so you know around how much it costs. And if you want to know how much your vehicle costs, you press the V, as in Victoria, and you can see some nice stats. Size and cost and volume. Cost. Almost 6,000 materials. Very nice. Now we have a fuel engine. Beautiful. Then we can go to the water tab. On the water tab we have something called air pump and um, if you want to okay if you have a weird direction just click G like that and you'll get it in a nice direction you only need one air pump or you can only have one air pump per open like place and now we added an air pump and now you can see all the water disappeared this makes us extra floaty but it's nice to be floaty without an air pump too, because it's likely that sometime during the battle your engine will get wrecked and not output any energy, or uh, your air pump will get wrecked and not output any air, or throw out any water, which makes you sink. Also, your air tank won't be very efficient if you have a hole. You can see, now the water leaks in, super sad. So you want to be floaty anyways. You know, I just talked about ammo can be kind of dangerous and all. Well, there are two ways to protect your ammo. Make a centralized ammo storage that has a lot of armor. Uh, but the better way to make a ammo storage is to spread them out. So we'll make a little ammo box here. And then we can see one, two, three, four. This is the distance in between ammo blocks we need to be sure that they won't blow up in series. Very nice. Now I forgot the symmetry plane. Sad. Okay, not sad anymore. Go to resources. Now you go to ammo storage. Now you can select some different types here if you want. If you get into weird menus, you need to click a very, very, very tiny little X and you can get out of that, by the way. I'm just gonna add a couple of ammo barrels because they look cute. Right, symmetry plane. That's N if you forgot it. Look how nice. Now we have some ammo storage. Now, of course, when I close this off, this will be enough ammo storage for this little ship. 
Now, uh, there is actually so that uh, previously in From the Depth, if you played this game earlier, ammo kind of generates naturally, but very slowly. This will go away if it hasn't gone away, gone away already when you watch this video. So you need something called ammo processor. You just throw in an ammo processor and it's powered by engine. It will turn materials into ammunition, which is very nice. So uh, that's what it does. What you also want to have because of this is you want to have some storage space like a huge box is probably more than enough, so we'll have two of them, and you can even freight some random shit. Having some storage um, space is nice also, because if we go down to miscellaneous blocks, we can have something called repair bot. They're kind of expensive, so don't spam around with them all over the place, but you want at least one or two of them to slowly be able to generate your ship, which is nice to have. If you have material, it will slowly generate, which is very nice. Anyways, a ship is nothing if not dead when it doesn't have an AI. So we will make an AI. Now you remember I talked about stones before. Stones are very nice and we're going to make a little AI. And there is something called EMP, which you don't need to care about very much early in the game. You can just ignore that for the time of being. But EMP fucks up electronic equipment, which means that you want to have this little habit of always building your AI on a insulating surface. I usually use stone because it's kind of protective. It's not leading any energy and it's also cheap. Okay, it looks stupid, but remember, it's actually not heavier than a metal and it's kind of protective. So forget a little bit what you think about, you know, about materials, because this is from the depth. Now we go out to free look mode using F3. Go to free paint and select a nice paint. Because stone looks horrible, if you paint it black, you can kind of pretend it's some kind of weird composite material. Aesthetics is important. Now you go in here again and you select this first little bucket here, which is color zero, because otherwise your, all your other components will get the interesting color. All right, if you can't place a block down as you'd expect, then you just aim the general direction and click G and everything will work out fine. We're just gonna remove this little thing. I usually build my AI and stuff in like this old nice mood because it's easier. Now we have an AI mainframe, and uh, which is very nice here. We'll go into the settings here later. Then we have some connectors, which is nice if we want to expand on it. Um, and then we go to targeting and Michelinus cards. We have general purpose card. This is processors, which we need to use for our detectors later. They are kind of expensive, actually 100 material each, but you kind of need to have detection. So AI is expensive. That's also why you want to protect it. You'll see how much efficiency it has later on when we add a detection equipment. But first, we'll just add some basic stuff here. Because we're going to be lazy, we're going to add one of these AI card slots um, and we're going to pre-configured -config cards and we are going to select the circling ship AI. So we'll have a basic movement for that. Then we are going to go to oh, inter vehicle transmitter. If you have this on all your vehicles, they will be kind of able to communicate and all so that they can send detection signals to each other. It's pretty, use pretty useful. Then we have a wireless transmitter. You only need one on your AI or any one of these connections. Then you can connect up all your detection equipment wirelessly, which is nice. However, we are now going to go uh, yes, into the settings of the AI, because now we have some basic stuff laying down here. All right, so now usually you, when you set this up, you need to select this to make it active. It's already selected now, so we don't need to care about that. 
Then we go to adjustments and we can tweak around a lot here. If your ship is super deep, you might want to take this higher. Um, keep a little marginal so it won't drive into stuff. Then we have maneuver, hover maneuverment, powered by simple AI. So that's just the pre-configured card. We can of course add a maneuver and say it's a ship or tank or something like that and make this active. Not sure why it uses hover maneuverment, but um, that's the pre-configured card, so it will work. Then we have additional routines. So if we have sailing here, it can automatically by itself use sails, but that's a little advanced, so we'll just not deal with that. All right, super nice. I think our AI is kind of set up and ready to go. Of course, we need detection equipment. Now we will go to connector and we'll set up some detecting detection equipments. You want your detection equipments to kind of hover above the rest of the ship um, so that they will be like a radar tower or something like that. Because that's how it works. Now we have a super high tower. You can do some different configurations but basically, we just want a little connector here. We go to wireless transmitter and we go to wireless receiver and paste one on there. Now it has connection to the mainframe. Now we want detection equipment. Now different detection equipment have different costs of course, but the main cost is actually how much processing power they need because remember, each of these costs 100. So what we can do is check the prices here of basically how much data they take. Laser rangefinder is super cheap, so you can have a lot of them if you wish, because they're pretty decent. We paste one on top there. Now basically all everything that's called a tracker only tracks uh, targets that has already been detected. And everything that's called anything else is basically of this stuff, is basically detecting stuff for you. That's the simple, nice solution. Okay, so then we have a 360 camera or a 360 radar. The cheapest detection solution you should have is a laser range finder and the 360 camera. This is the absolute cheapest solution and is suited well for all tiny builds or just early builds when you're kind of new. So use this. But uh, we are having a little bigger ship, so we're going to have a little bit, a little bit better equipment. So we're going to have a laser range finder, we're going to have a 360 radar, and then we're also going to have something called a camera tracker. Now we want to spread out our equipment a little bit so they don't all get blown up. We just click R on this block and we can copy it, very nice. And then we'll just copy some blocks like that. Beautiful. And then we go down here. Let's see where is it. Detection. And then we go to camera gimbal tracker. Oops, wrong direction. G. Right direction. Now the camera gimbal tracker is very good at like targeting stuff that's already detected and will give you excellent bearing. Actually, you can read a lot about them here. You can just read this and you will be super smart. Now we have some basic detec detection, but we will have real problems detecting submarines. So at least one ship in your fleet should have a little detector here for submarines, which is, as you know, called sonar. And we are going to use a 360 sonar. So we just need to flip this down there and now it can detect submarines too. If we look at the AI mainframe here, it we can see it runs at 100% efficiency. So maybe we can even remove some of these processing power stuff. Okay, now it runs down to 98%. So if you remove too much of this, it will be not very good anymore. So we'll just keep it at 100% to be sure that it's good. Now, there is one thing you need to do. You need to click Q on any of the detection equipments, and then we have detection equipment. Click Auto Adjust. Then we go to Mainframe. Click Auto Adjust. You can play around these values a little bit more when you get into the game, but for now, 
after you have placed all your equipment, just click Auto Detect. It doesn't matter which of them you choose because it's already set up. Just check those two little boxes there and you'll be set to go. Now, we can't move around, which is a problem because we don't have any propellers and stuff like that. So let's go to the little propulsion part. Go to water, go to propellers. And the nice propellers, they are nice and all, but they're kind of tiny. So uh, we're just gonna have two huge circular propellers. We're just gonna have one there and one there. Very nice. Now, for the most simple movement, we can have something called a rudder. You can place the rudder in the back of your ship, kind of like that. And now it can basically move around. Okay, we can now go to control. And of course, we want to be able to sit in this ship. Um, we're going to sit on top of the engines, very safe. Go to vehicle controller and we go to ship wheel and we have everything we need. How do we teleport to a seat? Hover over it and click Q. Now you're there. Very nice. Now we can get out of build mode actually and select our first person mode. Then we can select our move around mode and then we can actually follow the ship with a camera. If you now hold uh, U, as you can see in the instructions here, you can set them to different main drives. Now we can see that the main drive is 100% then we can stop holding that button and you can use the H and the K to move. You might realize that the ship is kind of fighting you a little bit and that's because the AI is also trying to control this thing. Now another camera trick that's very useful to know is if you click E, brings up the map and click E again. Now your camera is free and all. So um, you can just hold the U and J button to stop the ship in its track and you can go into E again, you can zoom out, whoops, zoom in, you can select the patrol mode and then you can boss your ship around like this. If you hold shift, you can set up many waypoints. Very nice. So now we don't need to control the ship ourselves anymore. Very nice. But of course, we're not done yet. We're going to build some more on this beautiful ship. One thing that's very good to remember is to kind of try and protect your detection equipment. Remember to not block anything, but do have some protection because this is like these systems are very weak. So at least we want some protection. Okay, that's not super good armoring. Remembering from the depth that actually uh, how you place your armor matters because bullets and stuff like that can bounce off. Good to know. Now, when you're building from the depth, you will notice that your ship wiggles around a lot, and that's because of this annoying boat rudder. My recommendation is that you just skip the boat rudder, and you'll go if you don't want it to tilt, of course, and you just select some propeller here. Now, we're going to set this up, and we're going to have a couple of propellers that will control how we steer or not. And when we place this down, these are kind of automatically controlled, which is very hand, hand, ha very handy. They're kind of automatically set up to be a turning or rolling thruster or something like that. But uh, we want this ship to be a little bit more stable. So as requested, I will now show you how to make a stable ship. Now, uh, pretend that this ship is kind of finished. You can see the mass here. Very nice. The mass is there. Then we can select a few of these propellers here that faces down and I think it suffices with one propeller there and one propeller in the front. Now you click Q on this and you can see it's set as a picture preset, picture preset. Otherwise you can click the picture preset. If you select this, you can see it's also a picture preset, which is not okay. Now you select this to be a roller preset. Do this for this as well. Mirror mode doesn't <coughs> copy the settings, so you need to go to the other side and set, say that these are roller presets too. Just make sure that this backward thing is a picture preset. Now everything should work fine. We can even try it by dropping it down. And just, you see, I 
Oh yes, we can roll it. We can roll it to the other side, beautiful. And we have L and O, beautiful. We can now roll it to all the sides. What we're going to do now is remove this little thing. We're going into the, uh, da, 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 the control department. And we're going to the PID, general purpose. We're just gonna slap down two PIDs inside here. They don't need to be inside here. I just want them to be protected. Now what you go is you select input channel roll and then you select propulsion roll. Beautiful. You go to this, you select propulsion pitch and of course input pitch. Now your ship will try to keep super stable by itself. Okay, and if it's not strong enough, you can mm, meddle around a little bit with like the gain values here. You can just, oops, increase them and they will be um, acting more strongly or aggressively. Um, if you keep them too aggressive, uh, you, might keep your, you might keep your ship to wiggle and stuff. So you can maybe play around a little bit with these. But um, this is kind of how you do or how everyone does to have a little bit uh, whoops, um, stable ships. And this set point change basically sets it where, where, where it will act, dependent on how you set them up. Now uh, you can play around a little bit with the settings if you think it wiggles a little bit to the side when you're turning or you can just remove some propellers and it will work that too. Very cool. Now we have a smooth and stable ship. Fantastic. We are now just going to cover this thing up here. Because, well, we don't want the AI to get crushed. Very nice. And, of course, um, when we are done with the upper deck and stuff, we, of course, will cover all this in metal and maybe even some armor sloping. But right now we have a huge problem. We don't have any weapons. We have everything except weapons and everyone knows that weapons is the most cool thing you can have. So what we will do is we will go to simple weapons. We'll start with simple weapons here. Um, now what you want to use uh, here, you can go just to medium and you can go and select one of these, uh, one of these beautiful things. This is an AI turret, an AA turret, anti-air turret. And we want one, at least one AA turret on this little build here. So uh, to set this up, we will begin with making a little deck in the back here, because you don't actually need to have your um, turrets like super exposed and stuff. We want them a little, a little hidden away, like the control parts, of course. Okay. So what we do here is we go into AI, we select something called local weapons controller. Now we go down here with, oh, alt and space is up and down by the way. We just face it forward like that, it doesn't matter by the way. Now you can see it's not connected, very sad. But first we want to add a failsafe. You can see the failsafe port kind of goes into the side of this ship or this thing. So here we have a failsafe. We want a failsafe. Otherwise, your, your turret might accidentally shoot your ship. Then you go and select a wireless receiver. And now this is connected to the AI. Jump up two steps, go to simple weapons and select the AI turret of choice. Click G to align it. And there you have it. Beautiful. We have an AI turret. And to make sure that this is an AI turret, if we want it as an AI turret, is to go to this weapon controller, click Q, and you'll just drag up this little altitude bracket so that everything above four or three meters will get shot at. So basically, um, no submarines or low going boats, <laughs> which is kind of means aircraft or kind of crashed aircrafts. Okay, very nice. Also, you can see that all my propellers are in the water. This is intentional. You want your propellers to be in the water, otherwise they won't work. 
Okay, so now I said the basics of the weapons. Now we're going to go slightly more advanced. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to add a little deck here. So let's just set up a little deck in the front. Oh, and while I was at it, I just set up this depressingly simple um, sloped, kind of ish sloped armor on our, around the ship. So you don't get kind of confused. But now the deck in the front here is kind of done. If we go down here and zoom in, we see we are here. Guess what we're going to do? We're going to go and we're going to go to local weapons controller. We're gonna add a little failsafe. And we're going to go to AI, select the little receiver, and there we have it. No weapon control. Now, what is interesting is that this can control a gun that's here or here, but not here. So you want to keep your guns kind of close. That's why we have it just one block under. This is kind of the minimum. Uh, or the maximum, I mean. Anyways, go to new objects. We're going to go to turrets. And we're going to select a one axis turret of three meter. Click G to align it. And there we have it. We are now building onto the turret. We are going to build a simple cram cannon because this is a very heavy and nice cannon to work with. So you probably want a few of these. Now, uh, you can see that this little weapon controller down here does control the turret. Also, uh, remember that you can't build on anything that's not the turret now. Now we are officially on the turret and can't touch anything else. We can just look at it. So anyways, we are controlling one weapons and this will mean that this weapon controller can control any weapon that's on board of this turret. The firing piece is kind of the weapon here. So what we're going to do is we're going to add some barrels. There are different barrels. We have a pivot barrel, that's very important. And we also have like normal barrels. Uh, the pivot or motor driven barrels, I thought it just changed name, never mind. Um, that can basically move around in all direction. Also, if we have an elevation barrel, it will mostly move around up and down, which is relevant here because we already have a side spinning turret. If you don't have that, you can kind of, yeah, use only the motor barrels and you'll get some kind of degree of movement. Now you can see here, it says it has 2.2 uh, um, azimuth movement and 80 elevation. Uh, if we add normal barrels to get a little bit more accuracy, you can see that eventually, whoops, did we remove something? No. The elevation arc will go down to 45. Oh no. So we'll only have this long of a barrel. You don't need that long of a barrel, but anyways. Now we can use the six way connectors to basically make our turret expandable in more directions. Um, then we want to have something called auto loader. Now the auto loader um, automatic uh, is not very easy, but it's kind of takes a long time to move around the auto loaders in the perfect direction. So you might want to fiddle around with that a little bit until you get the hang of it. Um, anyways, each auto loader has three ports. They are kind of hard to align. But um, yes, you can see, okay, there we have one, two, and three. Now we have a nice alignment, great, add autoloaders. Now, if one autoloader gets connected to the same ammo box twice, that is good. HEE is very damageable, it does a lot of damage, okay? So add HEE to your autoloaders here. Then we also need ammo boxes. If you add ammo boxes to autoloaders, it will decrease the load time. Uh, it will also decrease the damage slightly um, because the faster they load, the less punch they pack because then not enough explosive material has gotten stored into it. Okay, you can also mess around with EMP and hardened pellets and stuff like that, but uh, we'll just have an explosive turret with moderate reload time. You can read a lot about the stats here, but basically this is the main part. Then we go and we select something called gouge increase. This of course makes the turret 
have a bigger and better caliber, which means more punch. Now, ga ga gauge connectors can be connected to each other like that, and they kind of have the same stats as ammo. No, as, damn it. They have the same, uh, they have the same protectiveness as metal, so they're actually kind of decent armor. But of course, we need some sloped stuff. So, we will add some blocks here of first class protection. Oh, you can see, you can't place it in this direction. That's just a trap. You can actually, you just need to fiddle around a little bit. Okay. Um, beautiful. Um, I won't armor this turret kind of uh, super nicely, but you kind of get my... Uh, you understand what I mean. We want it kind of armored. Also, when we're speaking caliber, the cram cannons are kind of nice at bigger calibers. Um, usually you want more than 1000. Anyway, you can go in here and you can select required accuracy before fire. I don't know why cram cannons are this high, but drag this down to 10 and you'll be much more accurate. Okay, here we also can limit some stuff, but you don't need to care too much about that. To go back to your main build, you need to click some weird button, which is different dependent on what keyword you have. Um, yes, um, I need to rebind this, but uh, it's in the... Um, I think it's the, the hawk parenthesis, you know, the boxy parenthesis. Anyway, we need to do a little gun test, and fortunately, our character can control guns. We just need to go close to the gun. And then we can scroll until we see me. And you see, very nice. We can actually shoot stuff now. Beautiful. And if we go to the other gun, we can do a little test of that. We just stand beside it. And it's me control. We can switch out here so we can fly around. And we can see beautiful. We can control this turret. And we can click fire using control. If we click caps lock, we actually follow the bullet, which is kind of cool. Okay, I think you are fully capable of fleshing out the ship yourself. And something we have should, ha should have done much earlier but didn't, is of course saving the vehicle, which you should do all along the time you're building. Click escape, click save vehicle. Now we can write in something funny, like funny, and save it as funny. Then every time we click save vehicle, we will see that we can override the fun here, save over. And it won't change because nothing changed, but that's how it works. Now, I hope I don't have forgotten anything important. I actually don't think I have forgotten anything important, which is very nice. So, of course, we will take our complete ship and throw it to the wolves, which means going out of here clicking X and spawn the obligatory Marauder to test the ship against. F9 to get away. Okay, EE. And now we are flying around free. Very nice. Ooh, that one skipped over. Now, the Marauder is a little bit more sophisticated than our ship, but um, at least it will try to attack the Marauder with, with everything it's got, which is a kind of sad... Uh, cram cannon. You notice that my cram cannon wasn't very large, but this cram cannon that fires at us is very large. Oh my god, it actually deflected the bullet. Um, one problem I can see straight away is that our cram cannon fires very often, which means it's not very strong. If we had a slower reload time, um, if we had a slower reload time, it will be better for the cannon. Anyways, um, you can see that, god damn it, it deflects nice. Um, you can see that the ship hasn't died yet, but it's not super good at combat. Anyways, what we can do is we can, we can just uh, sneak aboard on this ship a little bit and we get into the AI. Oh, and if you click P, all the blocks shrink so you can see them easier. That's good to know. We can go in here and we can see combat distance. If we drag this down to like, I don't know, 300 meters, it will be a lot closer to the target. Probably um, 1000 meters, which was much better for its well-being, but what the hell. Oh shit. 
Okay, now we got our first hit. What happened? Now we can see. The side of this was completely blown out. Our engine is dead. Very sad. Fortunately, uh, our character is on board. But you know what's pretty funny? Ooh, we're not very floaty. And that's because, you guessed it, we don't have an air pump anymore. We're kind of tired of this, so we're gonna destroy... No, not everything. We're gonna destroy all enemy vehicles. Okay, now we're very safe. Now we can let our ship repair. We realized we need bigger turrets, we need more turrets, uh, we need more firepower, basically. But actually, our ship's defensive capabilities are over my expectation. Quite much over my expectation. Now, I hope this tutorial helped you. And this should help you build a sophisticated ship from the start. It's a huge shortcut from things you learn after many hours into the games. And now I just throw a lot of them at you and hope something sticks. Well, we are sailing away towards the horizon. I hope I will see you in future videos and tutorials because this is your host, Jimmy Desim, signing out.